Working with loops is a great way to do repetitive code because if I want to draw a rectangle on screen and if I draw it at something like 10, 100 and make it 50 wide and 50 tall and run my code I get a nice little rectangle but if I want 10 of those to fly their, themselves across the screen that's going to be a little bit more challenging to pull off unless I want to repeat that same line of code 10 times and that would be really sucky to do so. One of the beauties of doing coding is that we have ways to do repetitive code easily. The computer does not mind doing it but if we have to type it it's very unwieldy if I wanted my next rectangle to be at something like um, 70 150, 50. Now we run it, so we'll see we have two rectangles. But if I wanted to continue those all the way across the screen, typing out these rec commands would be very tedious and time consuming and just not a great way of doing it. So what we have inside of programming is a concept called loops. It will be a block of code that will run. A uh, good part about that is it runs until a condition is met, then we exit the loop. Bad part is if we build a loop that there is no condition to be met, we can create an infinite loop and that will crash your computer, which can be bad. So if you've ever been stuck on your computer where it will not respond to anything, chances are it got caught on some version of an infinite loop inside its programming, which is what now caused the system to hang up and eventually crash because it keeps trying to do something and it can't handle it anymore because now it's just going and going and going and it has no recourse, it has no exit. So while we are trying to set up our loop, we have a couple of different ways that we could do this. The two common methods that we will look at are while loops and for loops. There are all kinds of blog posts from coders online about the merits of each type of loop and how one is significantly better and more important than the other and there are different camps of loops where they're like it must you should only use this kind of loop if you do the other kind of loop you are a bad person so there it's a lot of uh, hate for the different kinds of loops and love for others use what you will um, first example using a while loop and we just start out with the word while and then I follow up with, I'm just going to write it out in, I'll get all kinds of uh, error messages right now. I'm going to use kind of plain language and then translate that back into code. Some condition is true. So while some condition is true, we want to do something. In that case, I want to draw my box. Well, so case for this one the condition that we're looking at is while x is my x position of my box is less than the width of my sketch draw another box so that's the gist of what I'm doing here so now we have to figure out how to go about doing this. We'll see that we have an interesting thing here. Well, I said x there. We haven't defined x yet. Processing is kind of friendly that way. If I use a variable but don't define it, it assumes it has a value of 0. And it assumes, well, I'm sure you meant to do it, so we'll just give you a pass and pretend that you did initialize that value at some point. I'll be like, OK, now we can do that. So now I want to draw another box where I could say racked and then x 150 50 so if I were to look at it now it's telling me oh wait we don't know what x is hmm that's bad so we have to figure it out so we could start it out at the beginning like we should if we're using a variable and I can use an intro float here. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go with float because we'll be using floats for a lot of our examples later on today. So I'm just going to run with that. So I'll say float x. 
inside my setup, x is equal to, we'll start it out with a value of 10. So while x is less than my width, draw a rectangle here. So now technically this is correct, but I've created a problem in that there's no way x will be greater than width, so I've now created an infinite loop. And if I run this, I have a likelihood I will crash my program and then that would be bad or crash the whole computer. Uh, processing sometimes is pretty good about sandboxing itself so it will keep control of things and hopefully it's not going to do that so I'm gonna I saved first now I'm gonna try and run this and let's see what happens and it's running we don't get to see anything on screen because it's now caught in that while loop and it can't get out Eventually, I think it's going to tell me that it's unhappy and it's stuck. But for the time being, it can't do much. Now, if I look at this, we can see x is 0, or x starts out at 10. But now, if I were to take x, in the first example, x started at 10. The next box, it was 70, so that's a difference of 60. So I could just say something like x plus equals 60. So that now makes x increase in size each time this loop runs. Now if I try and run this, let's see that I get a bunch of boxes. And it continued, but one box ended up slightly off screen. So that's problematic. So I'm not thrilled with that, but at least we have something working. Loop has generated a bunch of boxes that work their way across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, wait, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. So the 14th box barely runs off the edge of the screen. A while loop runs until a particular condition is met. I didn't do the math ahead of time to figure out how many boxes would fit on screen. I just ran it and there it is. A while loop works with an unknown quantity of objects, and it's really good for that kind of situation. A for loop works best when you have some way of knowing ahead of time how many times you want the loop to run. Do you want it to go one time, five times, 12 times? And you set a for loop, and it runs that. So you don't have to calculate, well, how many times is it going to run? You just say, I need it to run this many times and that's exactly how many times it will run. So for this next one I'm going to add in another um, value because we need another x to work with. We'll start it at the same point. To create the for loop, our syntax is a, going to be a little bit different as we set it up. But the guts of the loop are going to be pretty much the same. So we start out with four, then we'll have our parentheses, then some curly braces. Now within this for loop, we have to define three things. So in the while loop, I said, well, x is less than width. Inside the loop itself, I made x get bigger. Here, actually, we didn't need x2 as I'm thinking about this one, but that's all right. We may, we'll worry about it later. Int, I'm going to just say i is equal to 0. Actually, now to match, we'll start it out at, uh, now we'll, we'll go zero. And then while i is less than, so this is where we're doing our kind of how many times we want it to run. If I want to put 12 boxes on screen, and then I'm going to tell i I want it to increase by one each time. So there's a bunch of stuff going on here, and it's going to make a little bit more sense to explain through each of these once we see how it takes place on screen.
I'm just changing the fill color so we know indeed these are separate boxes. Now if I want to draw this box on screen, we need to figure out our x, y width and height. And the big part we're worried about is our x. The y, I'll just drop it down 100. So I'll just do y at 200 and then 50 and 50. So the challenge is figuring out how do we get this x to change or increase each time we go through the loop. And we could do it could put in x2 here and then use the same kind of method x2 goes up by 60 each time. So x2 started out at the same value it's going to go up by the same amount and it's going to draw a series of boxes if I run it Uh, if you look through what is going on here we have some interesting things happening and our original two boxes that were being overwritten by the loop are, we're messing things up So the reason that this is continuing on with the for loop when I was like, wait, it's supposed to end. It should have only created five boxes. We start out, we because this loop only executes five times. But the problem is it's inside of my draw function, which is executing 60 times per second. So at the end of those five, then the next time it runs, x2 already starts at... Um, a higher value and then it draws the next five and then draws the next five so it just kept moving its way over the screen. So what I need to do is at the end of draw reset it back to its original value and now it behaves as expected where it creates five. But one thing that we commonly will be doing inside a loop is if I'm using it where I'm not referencing this I thing, which I'll talk about in a moment, inside of my loop, I probably should just be using a while loop because this made more sense that it should have been a while loop. But instead, what we need to figure out is, okay, I want this to be X2, but I want to offset it by a certain amount. The amount I want to offset it is I times 60. Because I know I want these boxes to move over 60 each time. The first time I go through this loop, I is a value of 0. 0 times 60 is 0, so x2 will just be 10. The next time this loop runs, let's see, because at the end of the loop after you run it, this third value here says I want I to increase. So the increase says goes up by one. Plus plus is programming shorthand for add one. So plus plus would be the same as writing i is equal to i plus one. We also saw i plus equals one and i plus plus. All three of these statements produce an identical outcome. i is equal to i plus one i plus equals 1, i plus plus. All of those are the same thing. So when I write out my for loop, I say I need a counter. This counter is keeping track of how many times I'm going to go through the loop. We're starting it at 0. We don't have to start it at 0, but we usually do. Then I'm going to say, OK, I want this loop to run as many times as it can while i is less than something. That less than is, in this case, 5. Now we can also use greater than because we can make i 
decrease instead of increase. So we have lots of, I mean, there's lots of things we can do. But for now, the common form would be i starts at 0, semicolon. i is less than something, semicolon. Then i increases by something. Now we can increase instead of by 1, I could increase by 2. So I could say i plus equals 2, and then it goes up by 2 each time, which would then make my boxes kind of skip 1, because then they would be doubling that position each time. So the first time through, i is 0. So i times 60, that's 0. So x2 is just its original value of 10. The next time the loop executes, i has now increased by 1. So x2 plus 1 times 60, so it bumps it over 60. Then we finish the loop, so i goes up by another one. Let's see, I, that puts it at 2. 2 is still less than 5, so let's run the loop. Then 2 times 60, 120, plus x2, which was 10. So, and it keeps going until I've gone through five times, and at the fifth time, after the fifth time, i is now equal to 6. 6 is no longer less than 5, so the loop stops running. So for loops work when we know we want to only run it a specific number of times. A while loop is, we could say, while a certain value is continually less than something. So if we look for a threshold, if we had a microphone giving us audio input, we could say, as long as the sound is below a certain threshold, record the sound. But if it exceeds a certain amount, stop recording. Or we can set a minimum. We can say, while the sound is less than a certain threshold, don't record anything. But as soon as it's loud enough to record, then start recording. That's what our cell phones do on the microphone so that when it's kind of quiet, they cut out so they're not picking up all the background noise. That way they can only be picking up your voice once it detects you're speaking loud enough into your microphone on your device.